You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. It takes two to tango. You're given an array ARR along with an integer named target. Calculate the number of pairs in ARR that can be added together to form target. Here we can have a look at our input and output as well. Our input is six, which is the number of elements in ARR, which is given here, and four, which is the target. This is the output. Let's take a closer look as to how our output was formed. Clearly here we can see one and three. They both add together to form four. Two and two add together to form four. So totally there are two pairs of numbers that add together to form the target that is four. So our output will be two. As we can see right here. So let's have a look at our constraints here. The length of the array is between one and 100. Each element of the array ranges from one and 100, meaning there are no negative elements in the array or zero. And finally, the target's length can vary between one and 10,000. Now I'm going to leave the screen open as per usual. You know the drill. Just think about it, write it down somewhere. You don't have to come up with a solution. I'll give you a clue later on. But just have the problem in front of you and think about different ways you could go about solving it. This right here is your clue. Firstly, we're going to have to use an advanced data structure which you might or might not have visited in our previous videos in order to solve this in a complexity of big O of n. Approaching it and trying to solve it in a complexity of big O of n squared is not very difficult. What we can do is we can have two for loops, one iterating from zero to n minus one, the second iterating from i plus one to n minus one, where i is the for loop above it, and just check if the two elements add up to form target. This is a perfect uh, solution for big O of n squared complexity. But to try to solve it in a big O of n complexity, we're going to have to use hash maps. And this right here is the formula you're going to have to use to achieve it. We know this is our condition. ARR of i plus ARR of j should add up to our target. Let's try modifying the formula v bit. Now we can see ARR of j is equal to target minus ARR of i. This is the important bit, and this is what we're going to have to use. How? That's for you to figure out, guys. I'll see you when we get back shortly. Guys, this right here is our solution. We're going to be solving it using hash maps. In case you don't know what they are, just click this caption right here. It'll take you straight to a video that explains it really quick. So remember, we've already discussed that our solution is going to be done in a time complexity of n, meaning we're only going to iterate through this array once. So now let's just hit the first element. Let's get straight into it, see how that works. When we hit one, what are we going to need to pair it with in order to form four? One plus three is four. So we're going to need to pair it with another three. That's why three and one go inside our table. Now what these two values mean is that there is one one. This count is the number of ones. There is one one that's looking for a three in order to form a pair. So why do we have this count? In case there was a second one here, let's say between one and two, there was a second one. Now the count would become two. With the moment we encounter a three later on, it doesn't just form one pair. It forms pairs with all previous ones. So in this case, there's only one previous one. If there were two previous ones, it would form two pairs because the first one and three would have formed one pair and the second one and three would have formed a second pair, which is why we need to maintain a count. Now we hit the next element. That's two. What do we need to add it with in order to form four? It's another two, which is why we add two with the count of one. Now we hit three. There were this many prior elements that wanted to form a pair with three in order to form four. Now that three has come, this many prior elements can form a pair with three. So this count gets added to our result. Initially, our result is zero, naturally. When we add this count to it, the count is one, our result becomes one. Now we've also got to make sure to add four minus three into our hash map. That's because in case we see a future element, in case we see a one in the future, that is four minus three is one, we're going to have to pair it with this three. Now we already know what this statement means. There's one three looking to pair with the one. 
Now we're going to hit two. We can see that there was one previous element that wants a two. So we're going to add this count to our result. Our result has become two. And now we add four minus two into our hash map. But four minus two, that is two, is already present in our hash map. So we simply update this count to two, like so. Now, guys, we're stepping into the realm of medium level problems, all right? We're no longer tackling easy problems. So from here on, we're going to pay attention to the constraints. Our constraints told us there were no negative numbers. The only way to make nine into four is by adding minus five to it. But there are no negative numbers and there are no zeros, which is why if our elements are ever greater than or equal to our target, we're just going to skip over them. Nine and 10, both greater than or equal to our target. We simply skip over them and go to the end of our RT. Right here, we can see the bulk of our code. Result is initially zero. This is just declaring our hash map. And here, first we check if the element in the array is greater than or equal to the target. If it is, then the result which goes into our hash map will be zero or a negative number, which we don't want, which is why we just hit continue. If that element is present in the array, then we take the count and we add it to our result set. The last step to do is to check if target minus that element is there in the array. If it is, simply increase its count by one. If it's not, that is else then we're going to put target minus that element into the array with a count of one. As we can see right here, and we return our result. Let's see how we fare when we execute it. Sample test cases have been passed, the true green button test. It's been accepted for every single test case. And you pass with flying colors. So guys, that's the solution to the problem. It takes two to tango. Hope you liked it. If you did, you know the drill. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Leave your comments down below if any thoughts, anything you were confused with, or maybe any more difficult problem that you want us to tackle, just leave it down below in the comments. We'll make sure to have a look. We'll make sure to reply. And I'll see you guys next time.